Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're going to teach you Yokohama, which is a two to four player game from the designer Hisashi Hayashi and is published by TMG Games. We're going to get right into this video. First, I do want to mention we have a contest going on. If you want your chance to win four games from my collection, click on the link in the card showing up in the top of the screen right now, and that will get you over to the video to explain exactly how you can win uh, those games possibly. So now let's get down to the table and we're going to teach you Yokohama. Depending on the number of players, some of the area and management boards may not be used. Players will only use the boards indicated for the number of players. Any unused boards are returned to the box. The specifics for area boards and management boards being used with certain player counts are found on this chart on page three of the rulebook. Also, players can simply look on the back of the management boards or area boards. If there is no player count listed, then it's for all player counts. If this symbol is there, then it's for three or more players. And this symbol is, of course, for four. The same symbols are found on the back of the area boards. So for all player counts, for three or more players, and four players. Next, players shuffle the area boards. I'm only using the ones for a two-player game. Keeping them face down and then turn them over one by one in the appropriate configuration, depending on the player count. This is the configuration for a two-player game. The three and four-player configuration can be found on page three of the rulebook. Place the score track directly above the area boards and place the management boards on either side of the score track. Shuffle the building site cards and put one in each of the appropriate spaces on the areas. Shuffle the five power tokens and place one face up in each of the five spaces of the areas. The rest of the building site cards and five power tokens will be returned to the box. Place all the following components near the boards as well. The one and three yen coins, the imports, the foreign agents, the copper, tea, silk, and fish, and the station token. The first player is whoever most recently visited Yokohama and they receive the start player card. If no one has visited Yokohama, then just use whatever method you prefer for determining start player. That person will remain the starting player for the entire game. Each player gets one warehouse of their chosen color, one president, one score counter, 20 assistants, 12 of which will be placed in the warehouse, 8 shops, 6 of which are placed in the warehouse, 4 trading houses, which are all placed in the warehouse, 1 copper, silk, tea, and fish, and 4 yen, except for the starting player who only gets 3. Shuffle all the order cards to form a deck. Depending on the player count, a certain number will be returned to the box. In a two-player game, 16 are returned to the box. For three players, only five. And for four players, no cards are returned to the box. Then, from the remaining draw deck, place order cards face up in each space of the port, as well as the docks, which are only used in a three- and four-player game. Then, deal each player two orders. That player will look at the orders and choose one to keep while returning the other one to the box. Shuffle the technology cards to form a deck. From this deck, fill the laboratory management board, as well as the research center, which is used in four player games. Place the remaining deck nearby. Next, take all of the A achievement cards, draw one and place it on the appropriate space on the score track. Do the same with B and then C. The remaining cards are returned to the box. If playing a two-player game, use an assistant of an unused color to block the spaces with this two-player symbol on it. These are only found on the customs management board and the church management board. Now let's go over some general rules that apply throughout the game. The four trade goods, copper, tea, silk, and fish, the imports and the money are not limited by their number of pieces. If the player runs out of pieces, they should find a suitable substitute. All information in the game is public except for the order card in the player's hand. Components should always be placed so that all players can see them. 
A player may have a maximum of three order cards in their hand, and they may not discard an order card to make room for more. There is no limit to the number of tech cards a player may have. However, none of them may be duplicates. When the player scores points, they advance their score token on the score track. When they pass 100 points, they will flip their token over and continue scoring like that. It's very important for the player to keep track of what's in their hand versus what's in their warehouse, as things such as assistance and shops will only be placed from their hand and never directly from their warehouse. This includes the trading houses as well. The game will progress in rounds of turns clockwise from the starting player. The players continue to take turns until one of the end game conditions occurs. At that point, the players will finish the current round and then play one final full round. After that, they'll tally their scores and determine the winner. On a player's turn, they'll resolve three phases in order. First, they'll have an additional action phase. Then they'll have their main action phase, which as you might guess, is the main portion of the game. This consists of six steps. And then finally, they'll have a second additional action phase. Before we discuss the additional action phases, let's discuss the main action phase. Out of the six steps, Steps four and five are optional, but the rest are mandatory. The first step is the placement step. During this step, the player will place assistance from their hand onto an area board. The player may either take three assistants and place one of them on a different area board each, or they may take two assistants and place them both on the same area board. Maybe in this case, the player places one in customs, the employment agency, and the copper mine. All placements must follow these rules. Assistance must come from the player's hand and not from the warehouse. The player may not place assistance in the canal, which is only used in three or four player games. If the player's president is on the board, they may place assistance with their president. And if they place an assistant in an area with one or more opposing presidents, they must pay each player who has a president there one yen. And that cost is for each assistant they place in that location. If the player is unable to pay, then they cannot place the assistant there. Step two is the movement step during which the player will move their president. They may choose any of the following three options. The player may take their president from their hand and place it on any legal area board. A legal destination is an area that contains at least one of their assistants, as you see there and no opposing presidents, so the copper mine would not be a legal placement. The most common option for moving a player's president is to move from one area to another. In this option, the player may move their president through any number of adjacent areas to a legal destination. Keep the following in mind when moving your president. Each adjacent area the player moves through must have at least one of their assistants. Shops and trading houses do not count for these purposes. And if the area they want to move through contains the opposing player's president, they can still move through it, but they cannot stop there as it's not a legal place to end up. So if the red player wanted to move from customs to the port, they could do it as long as they paid the blue player one yen. When moving, the player's president may not move and then return to their same original location. As long as the player is able to move, to a legal destination, then they will move on to step three. If they are unable to, then they must follow the next option. The third option is that the player may move their president and their assistants to their hand. When choosing this option, the player may return their president and any assistance from any area to their hand. If they do this, they skip the main action phase steps three through six and proceed directly to the additional action phase. Step three is the area action. During this step, the player will carry out the action of the area their president now occupies. The more tokens the player has in that area, the stronger the action will be. First, the player calculates their power in the area. Each of the following contributes one power. The president, each assistant, a shop, a trading house, and the station. The player then carries out their action based on their total power. In this case, they have four total power. It should be noted that 
along the tracks here, nothing is above five. And so any power in excess of five will be ignored. In this case, with four power, the player would gain two copper. I'm not going to go into exactly how each area functions in this video, but they are listed in detail on pages 11 through 15 of the rulebook. If an opponent has a trading house in the area being activated, then they gain one yen from the bank. However, a player will never receive money for having their own trading house on the area. The next step after the area action step is the five power bonus. This is an optional step and it requires the player to have five power on the area. The first player to do a five power action in that area will gain this bonus that was placed on the area in the setup. The player takes the token, places it in front of himself, resolves it, in this case, gaining one import, and then places it face down for the remainder of the game. The fifth step is construction, which is also optional. If the player carried out a four or five power action, they may choose to construct a shop or trading house from their hand. Now a player may only have one shop in an area, so let's pretend this one wasn't here right now. And maybe it looks like this, so they have four power, so they're able to do construction. The shop must come from the player's hand, not the warehouse as usual and they place the shop on any of the empty shop spaces and gain the reward. In this case, probably placing it here to gain four victory points. If a player has gotten a trading house out of the warehouse and into their hand, they could construct that here instead. Each area may only have a single trading house, so as long as no other opponent or the player themselves has built one here yet, they can build it and then gain the victory points shown beneath it. At the end of the main action phase, the player must take all assistance from the area in which the player carried out their area action and return them to their hand. In each additional action phase, the player may do the following actions in any order. They may use foreign mercenaries once per turn, so either in the first additional action phase or the second additional action phase, not both. They may fulfill achievement cards as many times as they like, and they may fulfill an order card as many times as they like. To use the foreign mercenary, the player must first turn one of their foreign mercenary tokens that they have obtained face down to show it's being used. They then choose an area which meets the following two conditions. It must contain at least one of the player's assistant pawns, such as the copper mine, and that player's president pawn may not be in that area. However, it is okay if the opposing player's president is in there. Using a foreign agent in a area that has the opposing player's president does not cost the current player any money. Once they've chosen the area, they resolve steps three through six exactly as we've discussed for the main phase, which of course means they will activate the area, in this case with three power, gaining one copper, if they had activated it with four power or five power, they could also do the five power bonus or the construction. And then of course, the recovery step. If the player has met the requirements written on an achievement card and it is the additional action phase, they may place an assistant pawn from their hand to that card and gain the corresponding victory points. The first player who achieves this will score the leftmost victory points, in this case, eight while the later players score the rightmost points, in this case, six. Each achievement card is described in detail on page 16 of the rulebook. Also, each player may only fulfill each achievement card once per game. To fulfill an order card, the player places the order card from their hand face up in front of themselves. As you can see, the red player has three T and two copper. The player then gains the corresponding rewards, nine victory points and one import. After fulfilling an order card, check to see if the country icon shown matches another order card that the player has also fulfilled. If it does match other fulfilled order cards or obtain technology cards, the player gains the foreign mercenary of that country. However, if there are no matching mercenary tokens in the supply, the player does not receive any. The end game has begun when any of the following conditions are met. One or more of the players have built all four of their trading houses. 
One or more player has built all eight of their shop houses. Players obtain order cards from the port management board by using the port. If they cannot refill it because the order deck is empty, then the end game has begun. Players will place assistance on the church management board by using the church area board that's down here at the bottom. Once a certain number of assistants are on this board based on the player count, the end game has begun. It takes four assistants in a two player game, five in a three player game, and six in a four player game to initiate the end game. Customs does the same thing for the customs management board that the church does for the church management board. And the end game conditions are triggered the same once there are four assistants on this board for a two player game, five in a three player game, and six in a four player game. When any one of these end game conditions are met, the players finish playing the current round and then there is one final full round, then move to final score calculation. Players calculate the final score in the following order. First, look at the church management board. The player with the most assistance there will gain six victory points and the player with the second most, three. If there is a tie, the tied player with the right most assistant wins the tie. Players then do the same for the customs management board. First place gets eight victory points, second gets four, and ties are broken in the same manner. Players will then add up the total industry value of all of their technology cards. The player with the highest total industry value receives 10 victory points, and the second highest receives five victory points. In the case of a tie, the player who is closest clockwise to the start player breaks the tie. In the case of a tie, the player who it, in the case of a tie, the tied player who is closest clockwise to the start player wins the tie. If the start player was part of the tie, they would be the winner of the tie. At this point, all unfulfilled order cards are returned to the box. Each player then looks at the number of different country icons they have in their possession from their tech cards and their completed order cards. They then break them up into different sets of icons. One icon may only be used once per set. A set of five different countries, as you see here, France, Netherlands, Germany, Great Britain, and United States, is worth 12 victory points. Four icons is worth eight victory points. Three is worth four victory points. And two is worth two victory points. Finally, the players score their various remaining tokens. Unused foreign mercenaries are worth one victory point each. Imported goods are worth one victory point each. Every two yen are worth one victory point. And every three trade goods are worth one victory point. The player with the most victory points wins the game, and in case of a tie, the tied player closest to the start player wins. There you go, that was Yokohama. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Check out that contest. Get over to that video so you can win those games. And until next time, if you're bored online, or offline. So, if the player wanna move their president from customs to the port, they could, as long as they played the blue put. So if the player wanted to move their, so if the red player wanted to move from customs to the port, they could do so as long as they paid the blue player. So if the red player wanted to move from customs to the port, they could, as long as they played, oh my God.